And welcome back to another week of Good Morning Thailand as we welcome you to our news and uh, issues commentary sort of program. And we've got Bill Barnett in the studio. Welcome back again, Bill. All right, to another Monday, and I'm uh, a little excited today. The sandbox is coming, and it's just a little over a month away. So, hey, we'll be talking about that later on. That's uh, reopening Thailand, specifically Phuket. Just a few things I wanted to mention. Firstly, uh, just a shout out to uh, Coffee Club. Now, they're meant to be providing us with coffees each morning. At the moment, uh, we've Where's cut, the coffee, Tim? Exactly. It's been five days and we've had coffees once. No. So I want to shame them and their delivery service uh, to get some action. So oh, and Coffee Club. Coffee Club, Coffee Club, hashtag Coffee Club. Uh, we'd like our coffees delivered, please. Another thing I wanted to mention, Bill, was uh, Netflix have got a show on their roster now. It's been at the cinemas in Thailand. Uh, it's been sort of around the circuit. It's called 2215. Have you seen it? I have not. 2215 describes the number of kilometres run by uh, a popular guy in Thailand called, uh, he's known as Toon. Sure, sure. But uh, Atiwat Toon Kongmalai yeah. is his full name. A great personality and a big supporter of uh, tourism here. Yes, and uh, he's also the head singer, the, the lead singer in Body Slam, the, the, the group, and has been performed down here many times. And he's run in the Phuket Marathon many times and other marathons around the country. But he ran from the south, right down the bottom of Yala at the Malaysian border to the very north of Chiang Rai, uh, some 2,215 kilometres, which is the name of the, uh, the program. It's got Thai subtitles. <clears throat> I'm not usually into watching subtitled right. films, but it's really good and you get very emotional. Uh, the, the impact he had, the profound effect he had on a lot of people's lives. They were raising money for the, the Thai uh, hospital system. Sounds like a great watch. Huh? It is a really good watch, highly recommended. But now we're going to cross up to Bangkok. Now there's been, uh, of course, a, a prof a big situation in Bangkok over the past couple of weeks where the number of cases have been going up, 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 yeah. but the rest of the provinces have been going down, down, down. Well, 4,000 a day, right? 4,000 yesterday, I think the same on Saturday. A lot of those in the Thai prison system, which is a, another topic. But online, we've got somebody who actually works in some of these high density housing areas. High density? I call them high density housing areas. Other people describe them as slums. I think that sort of puts a whole lot of connotation. No need for the tiger to be PC, it's okay. We can just, you know, call but, it a slum, it's okay. But uh, Friso Poldovart is the co founder of the Bangkok Community uh, Help Project. Friso, we've got you online. Good morning, guys. Good morning to you. Uh, now, we'll talk about the work that you've been doing uh, soon, but can you describe this, no. um, this area in Klong Toi, which uh, ha has come to our attention as an area of a, a lot of COVID cases? It's not that far from the, the upmarket sort of circumference strip. No, actually not. I think a lot of people that are living in Bangkok or come to Bangkok, they probably pass it almost every day without really knowing. It's actually at the intersection of Rama 4. If you're familiar with the Tesco there, it's the big Klong Toy wet market, the very famous one. And behind there is the, well, you know, the Klong Toy slum community, let's call it like that. A lot of people have issues with calling it slum, yes or no. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's what a lot of people call it, yeah. How many people are living in the area, estimated people in the area? It's estimated around 130,000 people living there. And the size is about one and a half square kilometer. So the density is very high. Also when you're there, the paths are very narrow. The houses are all together. Um, so yeah, obviously in times of a pandemic, a cluster is easily formed because there's so many people on such a little small space. And that's, that's the issue obviously at the moment. Well, who are the people that live there? Can you describe the population? Well, it's, you know, it's the, the people you meet every day. It's 7-Eleven uh, clerks, security guards, uh, your uh, delivery drivers. It's, it's obviously housing a lot of people with lower income jobs, people working in hotels, 
So the thing with, with a, a community like, like Long Te is that these people are all in this little confined space, but they work obviously all over the city. So it's like a breeding organism, right? They go back in and in the morning, they all go back out. That's why it's also, uh, uh, you know, such a worrying situation when, when a uh, outbreak happens in, in a place like that, obviously. With the current outbreak, is the government trying to lock down the area or how are they addressing the vaccinations or trying to clear up the, uh, of the COVID cases there? Well, uh, lockdown uh, was one of the plans. Luckily, that didn't happen. Um, we, together with the government, pushed uh, really hard, with the local government, pushed really hard for mass vaccination, mass testing. And luckily, that has happened. So the mass vaccination was the first mass vaccination program in Thailand. It ended uh, four or five days ago, and almost 60,000 people that live in Phuong uh, community has been vaccinated. So there's been uh, a great success, actually. You've also been vaccinated uh, as part of that uh, particular project. Uh, do you know about the vaccine that people have been given? Yeah, so there were two, two choices. So there's actually, it's, it's Sinovac for everybody under 60, and over 60 is AstraZeneca. So this is actually how they also for next month will roll out uh, you know, the, the real mass vaccination here. here. Do, do you have any of the migrant worker camps within the Klongtoy uh, high density housing community area? Yes, yes, there are some. Actually, op we were there two days ago, opposite the Klongtoy wet market. It's a huge construction site where now 950 people are in quarantine, nobody in or out. Um, very difficult situation, very hard because uh, the government is also having issues to control this now. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's happening, definitely. Just personal, so you've had the vaccine. How did you feel after you had the first shot? I felt very good. Okay, <laughs> so it's all good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's... Uh, of course, we run a lot of risk, so we were very uh, sure. grateful that uh, the government recognized that and put us first in line in, the, in vaccination. So that was good. I'm actually getting my second shot today. It's my birthday, so that's the birthday. Oh, happy birthday. How, how old are you? I'm 29. Just checking, because if you were saying you were like 60, I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to have that vaccine. Exactly. Uh, Friso, can you describe the work that Bangkok Community Help have been doing for this particular community? Yeah, we, we started at the first COVID wave, so it's more than a year ago. Uh, and what we see happening was that a lot of people were losing their jobs, losing their income. The issue is obviously that lower income jobs usually go first. And unfortunately, you know, that's, that's the people that need the funds, need the salary, needs the money the most because they need to take care of, usually not only if they have kids and their wife, but also the elderly, uh, their father, their mother, their aunts, you know, the whole family. So it becomes a very uh, complex situation very quickly when the income dries up. So we started, um, yeah, first COVID wave, we started handing out food. We got very involved in all the different communities. Uh, we've been building houses there. We've been doing schooling projects, all kinds, of, all kinds of things to sort of develop the community to become better, to give people the opportunity to learn some skills. Um, and that was going for, uh, yeah, for a year. Then sort of we got back into this situation where it's now very uh, hand to mouth. So we're there seven days a week, nonstop. Today is day 31 of our daily efforts. Um, so yeah, we're, we're literally trying and help uh, feed the people. So we're bringing out bags full with necessities. We're bringing hot meals every day up to 2000. Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing all that, that we can to, to help the people uh, come through this, this, this yeah, difficult time. I guess a city like Bangkok with 15 million people in greater Bangkok, how many other Klong Tories are out there? How many other places like this exist in that, you know, in a metropolis like this? And how are they being addressed as well? There are many, yeah, there are many. There are five and a half thousand in Thailand, slum communities. There's some... Uh, wow. Five and a half thousand. 
Yes, yes, yeah. Klonte is the biggest one. Uh, there are many, many smaller ones. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, they all require help. Um, and to be honest, if they're all getting the help that they need, this, this I'm not 100% sure about, but I'm afraid not. Yes, just because of the, you know, the amount of people that need help. It's very hard to help everybody. Yeah. So we'll put your details, uh, contact details under uh, this particular video in the description if people would like to contact you. should also mention, uh, you, you might like to talk about it briefly, uh, before all this happened, uh, you were actually an entrepreneur and you had a company called Dinner in the Sky, which if I'm yeah. not uh, wrong, was a crane dangling about eight people. Right. Um, so you get a spectacular view of Bangkok and some good food. Yes, yes, we, uh, we lifted up 50 meters in the air with a big crane. Uh, you have great uh, five-star food, four course, uh, with great views, I mean, unbeatable views. Uh, not at the so, moment. You know, sorry? Not at the moment. No, not at the moment. That's why we focus 100% on helping others. So it's also and, a good thing. Yeah, and it's great to see that. Uh, play it forward, play it forward communities are getting together and helping each other at this time. Friso, we'll thank you uh, and say goodbye at this stage on Good Morning Thailand and uh, appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Huh? Thanks a lot. And at this stage, we'd like to check all the main news from around Thailand today. 5,485 new COVID-19 infections and 19 coronavirus-related deaths were reported today by the CSA. Since April the 1st, the start of the latest wave of infections, there's been 130,929 COVID-19 cases in Thailand. Out of those new infections, 1,953 cases were reported in correctional facilities. The Department of Disease Control has set an ambitious goal to vaccinate at least 70% of Bangkok residents by July. The department will focus on the capital city and prioritise distribution of vaccines to other provinces based on how severe the outbreaks are in those areas. Thailand is officially extending its emergency decree for a 12th time. The decree was set to expire on May 31 and whilst there was no doubt that it would be extended, the Prime Minister has now signed the official document to extend the decree for two more months. And on one hand, Phuket officials are extending restrictions to control the COVID situation, whilst on the other hand, the Tourism Authority of Thailand is talking up the July reopening of the southern Thai island. On Friday, the CSA and the PM gave permission for the island's no quarantine reopening to go ahead. The plan's not yet been included in the Royal Gazette. More news about a partial easing of restrictions on the island from tomorrow at thetiger.com. And here we are back on Good Morning Thailand. Bill, uh, over the weekend, the Department of Disease Control announced that they are going to vaccinate 70% of Bangkok, a city of what, some? Uh, Greater Bangkok's about 15 million estimated. Officially, it's 8.3 in Google, right. but it is, yes, greater, way above Greater that. Bangkok. Yes. Sure. <laughs> but when are they going to do this by? By the end of June. Is it June? No. Yes, by the end of June. They've got a month. Uh, is this going to happen? I'm not sure it said June of what year. That would be the other question. I <laughs> it was said by July, which I, I think means yeah. this month, uh, next month, because we're 31st of May. That is a lot of people, considering that they've, uh, the uh, rollout of the vaccines has been quite slow. It's a pretty big ask. I'm also wondering that, uh, that they're saying that they're going to concentrate a lot of the efforts of vaccination in Thailand in Bangkok. Whereas, of course, places like Phuket and Samui, uh, and Chiang Mai and other uh, tourist areas are wanting to be vaccinated to get up to this so-called herd immunity as soon as possible so they can reopen. Uh, Phuket, of course, they're talking about the 1st of July, which we'll get to in a moment. So uh, if they're diverting all the vaccine resources and the people to give these vaccines into Bangkok, it's gonna put more pressure on these deadlines. So, uh, oh, without a doubt, you know, we've always said this, you can't isolate 
places like the Sandbox and say Koh Samui, Phuket, uh, Chiang Mai, these other destinations, Krabi, uh, uh, Pang Na. You can't say you simply, we can do things right there, but we can't address the Thailand situation. Thailand has to be fixed. And the only way to fix Thailand is to fix Bangkok as well. So again, there has to be a Bangkok plan, but I guess it's, a little, it's just too little too late. There's, uh, speaking of the sandbox now, the, the reopening of Thailand to travellers, it hasn't actually been closed, but the greater access to travel, non, um, no quarantine, is going to start on the 1st of July, apparently. Some more details came out over the weekend. I might just go through some of those. We've seen some issues, certainly. There's a meeting today with the governor in Phuket, and TAT also will be launching the uh, countdown for the sandbox as well. But you know, most of the questions are about children as well, about if I have children, how are my children traveling? And basically, the rules right now as they stand, kids from 12 to 17 would need an anti-gen test on arrival in terms of that, and kids below that would not need those tests as well. So there is a process. People always say, there is no process. What about children? There is a plan in place. I think we're going to be getting more details today. So it is a moving, again, it's another moving target, but there are plans. Uh, People will also have to carry a full itinerary um, about where they're going to be going, what their intentions are. Uh, After the first five days, they have to have a test, and then they'll be able to travel to uh, parts beyond Phuket, like they could go to Bang Na, they could go to James Bond Island, they could go to Koh Phi Phi, because Phi Phi Island is actually in the Krabi. province of Krabi. Uh, and then after seven days, they can travel anywhere they like in Thailand. So I think a lot of people are going to use this Phuket Sandbox uh, pilot program as a way of getting back to their families in Udon Wup Wup or uh, Chiang Mai or Pattaya or wherever their families are. I think without a doubt, Phuket will become the entry point. That is going to become the focus and driving people through. Again, which makes total sense as well. You know, people I'm talking to are saying, yeah, I'll come back, but I'll come back through Phuket. I'll spend seven days. I don't need to be in quarantine. The no quarantine is what drives the process. Yes, That's I think really that, important. That is uh, the, the big game changer. Also noticed that uh, the commentary over the weekend said that any restaurant, hotel, transport, or tour activity will have to be registered through this TAT uh, safety and Health Administration Program. I can't imagine a lot of tuk-tuk and taxi drivers going to all this rigmarole of getting registered. It hasn't been their way in the past. I think that there has to be a mechanism out there for, for, for safety as well. And with the SHA, it, is a, you know, it goes across many jurisdictions. So there is a process to go through. And I think travelers do what confidence. So there is going to be up to some procedures for everybody who's touching tourists going forward. That has to be in place. Well, how that's going to be uh, implemented and then enforced will, again, be fascinating because um, Phuket tourism... Got to start somewhere, Tim. You've got to start somewhere, and I'm all for it. But uh, the lawless nature of a lot of Phuket tourism in the past suggests to me that it's going to be a hard road to hoe. I think one thing that really, we're right now, what's bleeding many of the economy, we talked before about the slums in Klong Tui, people working in restaurants, people working in the tourism economy, is the liquor ban. And I think that's continuing in many places in Thailand, you're not allowed to drink in restaurants or bars. And to us, that's a little bit illogical right now in terms of not allowing these businesses to operate and it's costing so many jobs and everything else. Right now, there is no clarity when that's going to return and when people are going to be allowed to go back in that. And, you know, again, it's really putting a crimp. As an industry, it's killing the industry. My heart goes out to restaurants. It goes out to the employees there. Uh, It it has to be addressed sooner than later. Uh, Now, over the weekend, we also heard that Malaysia is going to have a circuit breaker style lockdown, 14 days full lockdown from this Tuesday. And uh, that's just just to the south of Thailand. They've obviously got a, an increasing problem with COVID there. This new uh, so-called Indian variant is spreading very quickly. Uh, the situation in Myanmar is not quite so clear. Uh, they've got other problems there as well. Uh, Laos still seems to have very low cases. Vietnam uh, has got rising cases, and they've just announced uh, in the last couple of days that uh, May the 31st is the deadline for people who don't have a current visa which means most of the people who have been stuck there over the last year have to leave Vietnam. So that's a big change to the people there. There's no such thing in Vietnam, for example, as a retirement visa. They just 
extend and... Uh, well, Vietnam also now is encouraging social distancing there. I think Asia, much of Asia is now experiencing what the West did a year ago. We're going through, yeah. we've gone through the blame game, we're going through all these restrictions. I think also mental illness in terms of that. When you're starting to talk to people in Thailand, there was a, a survey over the weekend that said, you know, 70% of people out there are becoming very despondent about the situation. I think that's something which much of the other parts of the world have addressed over the past year, but that's now coming to roost in Asia. I think going forward for the next six months, next year, it's going to be very serious issues here. Yeah, so it looks like um, far from what people have said in the past, Thailand looks to be a bit of a beacon of hope with its uh, reopening plans at the end of this month. Let's go to some of your, um, the comments that people have been saying about the program and about the tiger and about our stories. Always oh, interesting to see lots of comments out there. Again, you know, we encourage comments, we encourage things as well to come on. You're a bit open-chested there, Bill. Oh, that's, well, I'll have to button up. There we go. Here we go. Adrian, Thailand is not a high-end destination to target. High-end is delusional. Tim. Well, I think uh, there are a lot of very high-end things you can do in Thailand, but I think the magic of Thailand tourism has been that it's covered such a wide spectrum from the backpackers to the high-end. I mean, you can go up the coast, up and down the coast of Phuket or any, any resort destination in the country and find some very expensive, really exclusive, nice locations. I don't know, Adrian. Maybe we're living in a different Thailand. If I go to the Four Seasons in Bangkok, uh, Mandarin Oriental, I go to Icon Siam, these are certainly high-end destinations. I agree wholeheartedly with Tim. This is, you know, the beauty of, de uh, of tourism to Thailand is it's democratic. You have lots of, of people, you can do different things. It, it embraces people whether they're high-end, and there certainly are high-end tourists. To, to do that, you can't stick your head in the ground and think there aren't high-end locations, resorts here. Some of the finest resorts and hotels in the world, most expensive ones are here in Thailand. But the same end, backpackers, be it friends and family traveling together, there's a little something for everything in Thailand. I think that's important to understand. I think it'd be great if some of these high-end uh, tourism locations actually invited us there to stay for a few days, then we can give a much more accurate answer. Yeah. And we have uh, John Anthony Gray saying, um, have both you guys had the vaccine? No. Sadly not, but when it comes, I will take it. Uh, yeah, I will take it too, and I'm certainly, um, eager to be vaccinated to enjoy the freedom that it will provide and protection for my own health. Uh, but uh, yeah, everybody has to make that decision on their own. Uh, we'll be discussing that in greater detail on tomorrow with one of our guests. Maybe one final question, Chris D. I wouldn't go to any country where I have to take a test. You know, too many false positives. This is a little bit scary. When yeah. Phuket, uh, for example, had the situation where you had to uh, have a test before you came onto the island, or if you didn't have a test, they would give you one at the airport or at the Tatchachai checkpoint at the north end of the island. I thought, gee, I'm not so sure about that, but what if it does come up negative? I don't really have much control over that. They're gonna pack me into the back of a wagon and drag me off to a field hospital. I wasn't really in for that. So I think that the fear of these false positives does uh, make people a bit wary about testing. There's a fear factor, and you know, when I speak to people, they're always afraid of the test. Be, even though they've had it, they feel they don't, uh, you know, the risk of being, again, taken away in the paddy wagon or taken away wherever to state quarantine is a big issue. And I think that will come clean in time, but certainly the testing mechanism will get better. Yeah, and of course, well, last week we spoke uh, about this new one minute test being developed in Singapore and other countries are trying to uh, do breathonics, uh, the breathonics and this sort of thing will, I think, uh, become much more prevalent over the next year as we all want to open the country up and people's uh, innovation and technology will be diverted into coming up with ways that we can make travelling much easier as the, the whole world really wants to travel again. One other interesting development in Thailand last week was ride-sharing apps and the legalization of ride-sharing apps. I mean, that's one of people's biggest complaints about some of the resort communities are not having Grab, not having these other games where, you know, Uber disappeared a few years ago as well, you know, in terms of the extortion of pay with the taxi mafia. Taxi mafias are big problems in resort locations around Thailand. Less so in Pattaya, where they've got that Bart bus, which makes it very cheap and easy to get around. But places like Phuket and Chiang Mai have got shocking reputations with tourists and taxis. Hopefully the legalisation of the ride-sharing apps. Um, having said that, uh, travelling up and around Bangkok over the last year, I've been using Grab a lot, 
Now, not that I endorse them, but uh, I've been using them a lot. And uh, you just want to make sure when you do get a grab service that you're nowhere near the, um, the traditional uh, taxis or the motorcycle taxis because they don't like you using grab. But now it looks like it's going to be legalized, which hopefully will make it easier and fairer for everybody. So I think it's a good question for viewers, certainly, you know, Tim, about as, as well as we were talking, would you prefer going in a, a, a grab into a newer car with perhaps a driver who's younger, who maybe, you know, in terms of that, or would you rather go in a traditional taxi experience? I guess for ride sharing apps, the one good thing is you have a traceable uh, ride as well. You're able, if there are any issues, you're able to find that as well, but is it safer? What, you know, going backwards to the legacy, would you rather be in a taxi or ride sharing? Well, I, I think that, that it's, a, it's an evolution, and now the technology gives you ratings on the drivers. Uh, people can rate the, the driver that's going to pick you up. You can cancel the drive if you like. I think there's so many more options, and it's just an evolution of public transport. Uh, around Bangkok, no matter what vehicle you get into, it's going to be a slow ride. So there's so many ways of getting around Bangkok. Uh, you can get around on the, uh, the ferries and the boats and the BTS and the MRT and the old fashioned tuk-tuks, um, but it's, <laughs> it's always pretty slow on the streets. Exactly. Let's see how it goes with that. All right, uh, with that, I think we've covered a bit of territory today. Thank you for joining us, Bill. Okay, let's see what we hear on the sandbox. Certainly the new news coming out this week. It's gonna be an exciting week here in Thailand. Uh, and good luck to all the people who are um, opening the shutters and clearing out their shops. And let's hope there's some tourists that will come back and visit you soon. And we'll also try and do something about Bill's top button in the next 24 hours. Maybe. We'll see. Thank you very much to Jay for pushing the buttons there. And uh, we thank you for watching. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.